Right now we're being inundated with calls for shutting down the alternative media, with baseless claims that it's all just fake news, and more recently, that almost all of the alternative media is Russian propaganda. Meanwhile, the mainstream media continues to pretend it's the real news, when it's been on record since 1975 that the CIA supplanted its own journalists within the U.S. news media to propagandize the people, and further, we know that Obama signed the 2013 NDAA, which made domestic propaganda use legal. All of which is why Ron Paul can now confidently say, Fake news comes from our own government when they tell us about why we have to go to war and do these different things in our economic reports. The result is, we now live in a world where the Rolling Stones fake University of Virginia rape hoax and NBC News is deliberately and maliciously editing George Zimmerman's 911 call are just the tip of the iceberg. Here are five stories the mainstream media reported as real when they were indeed fake, otherwise known as lies. Number one, over 13 different mainstream media outlets reported that CNN, who claims to be the most trusted name in news, which in and of itself is a fake report right there, aired 30 minutes of hardcore transgender porn. The sole source of this claim? A tweet with a screenshot that showed blurred out porn overlaid with the lower third of Anthony Bourdain's show Parts Unknown. Because it was backed up by over a dozen mainstream outlets, we even reported on it, but turns out it was fake. That just goes to show you how much faith no one has in CNN these days. Number two, the boy in the ambulance. This story blew up everywhere as U.S. mainstream media outlets referred to this poor boy as the napalm child of our generation and decried Syrian President Bashir al-Assad. Speaking of CNN, they were all over this story of a little Syrian boy put in an ambulance after his apartment building was bombed to further the U.S. regime change agenda in Syria. Look at that. The CNN anchor fake crying is even color coordinated her outfit. Not only did President Assad come out on record to say that particular scene was entirely staged. To go back after my interview and go to the internet to see the same picture of the same child with his sister, both were rescued by what they call them in the West white helmets, which is a facelift of Al-Nusra in Aleppo. Mm -hmm. They were rescued twice, each one in different incidents, uh, just as part of the publicity of those white helmets. White helmets. But later it came out that not only was it staged, but specifically by a group called the White Helmets, who have been outed as being funded by Western governments specifically to create war propaganda, including the United States, who has given them tens of millions of dollars. Well, I can tell you that we yeah. provide, through USAID, about $23 million in assistance. Yeah. CNN was also later forced to admit that another video released by the same exact group was fake, trying to spin it that it was just a mannequin challenge. Wait. On your marks. Get set. Go! <laughs> yeah, right. Number three. There have been a lot of fake LGBT hate crimes reported as real over the past few years to push more division. Things like the fake tip snub, where a waitress claimed a family ran up a $93 bill and then snubbed her, writing a note that they disagreed with her lifestyle choice. When it turns out the family heard the story, claimed it was a lie, the restaurant located the original receipt, and sure enough, they left her 18 bucks. The restaurant ended up firing the waitress, but that didn't stop CBS from pushing the story anyway without a retraction later. The waitress in Bridgewater got an anti gay note on a receipt instead of a tip a customer wrote quote I'm sorry I cannot tip you because I do not agree with your lifestyle the customer apparently made an assumption based on Dana Morales short haircut Morales a former Marine posted the receipt to Facebook writing that she is angered and she is hurt by this message that's outrageous here she was serving yeah. sometimes rarely outlets actually do issue retractions but they're tiny and ridiculous in comparison to the original promoted reports like in the case of the daily beast reporting on a gay hate crime where somebody supposedly attacked a gay man and carved die fag into his arms here's the original 1400 word 39 paragraph report on the monsters who did this and here's the tiny three sentence retraction after it came out that the man actually did it to himself Number four, Brian Williams. Uh, two of our four helicopters were hit by ground fire, including the one I was in. No kidding. Uh, on this broadcast last week, in an effort to honor and thank a veteran who protected me and so many others after a ground fire incident in the desert during the Iraq war invasion, I made a mistake. It's amazing Mr. Williams is still on the air. And yes, he is still on the air. After it came out, he blatantly lied repeatedly about taking enemy fire while flying into Iraq in 2003. I want to apologize. I said I was traveling in an aircraft that was hit by RPG fire. 
I was instead in a following aircraft. Guess he really needed that street cred because he told the story over and over and over in the last decade. Yeah. On top of it's a problem. Until he finally got called on it. I became very sick with dysentery. Our hotel was overrun with gangs. And somehow, amazingly, he still has a job. I saved one of the worst in recent history for last. Number five, the WMDs in Iraq. Like the Gulf of Tonkin lie that got America into the Vietnam War on completely phony made-up pretenses. Renewed hostile actions against United States ships on the high seas in the Gulf of Tonkin have today required me to order the military forces of the United States to take action. After 9-11, we got stuck with the Bush administration's phony justification for war with Iraq. Iraq has chemical and biological weapons. That Saddam has continued to produce them. The United States knows that Iraq has weapons of mass destruction. There is no doubt that Saddam Hussein now has weapons of mass destruction. Saddam Hussein has gone to elaborate lengths, spent enormous sums, taken great risks to build and keep weapons of mass destruction. Now, even though it came out long ago how much of a big fat lie this was from both our government, it appears that there were not weapons of mass destruction. I did, part of the reason we went into Iraq uh, was uh, the main reason we went into Iraq at the time was we thought he had weapons of mass destruction. It turns out he didn't. I have not suggested there's a connection between Iraq and the 9-11. You know, one of the hardest parts of my job is to connect Iraq to the war on terror. And the obliging mainstream media whose job it is to parrot the government's lies and sell the American people more wars. Morning, new discovery by the New York Times. Weapons of mass destruction were found in Iraq. And intelligence from U.S. and British sources say he's moved some of his really heinous weapons to Syria and Libya. Now they're just changing tactics that the WMDs did exist, they just were moved to Libya and Syria instead. Who cares if there was a weapon of mass destruction or not? The idea is to try to help change the Middle East. Now look. And that's after the media lied about Assad using chemical weapons against his own people, even though it came out it was actually the Western-backed rebels who had done so. Is there any war America has fought that didn't involve a false flag backed up by mainstream media lies? Every war no, no, fought no, no, no. starts with a false flag operation. Who's even buying? these lies anymore or anything the mainstream media says especially after this last election not that many people and thus the clamp down on the so-called fake alternative news as anti-media recently reported what we are witnessing is utter desperation from the corporate elites in their attempt to control what we read and what we choose to believe and perhaps that's why secretary of state john Kerry said the internet makes it much harder to govern ashley banfield from a parking lot in phoenix reporting via satellite with Nancy Grace, who seemed to be in the same parking lot in Phoenix. I'm basing that, of course, on the fact that the cars that are passing by Ashley Banfield's location box also appear to be passing directly into Nancy Grace's box. The only way to really cure that was on the inside is understanding that Jesus Christ died for our sins. And so, th to me, on a micro level, it's understanding. Oh, and just like that, we lost him. Well, I don't know. Maybe he was watching CNN fake news. What do you think? <laughs> you don't buy. It was buy. a joke. I, I know it was a joke. I'm saying you, you, um, don't, you don't buy what he said, obviously. Aaron? Yes. I'm sorry, Senator. I'm saying you obviously don't buy what he said. You, you, you believe that, that he has seen these reports. I mean, to your Kevin, point. Kevin, I'm not. Are, are we on? Uh, it looks like we've lost connection with Senator Sanders. Hillary Clinton's a liar. She can't be trusted. And now the two faces of Hillary Clinton are coming out. The fact through WikiLeaks that she says one thing. Uh, and, and oh, no. All right, let's see if we can get Congressman Collins back. Obviously, we just lost the satellite feed. That sucks.